Well, I want to thank everyone for, for coming. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, my own, how I came to printmaking, which was accidental and uh, delayed. Um, and just a little bit about the, the prints that are in this portfolio, which are framed in the, in the back room as you go uh, through the door there to your right. Um, Susan mentioned that uh, we first met in the print shop at uh, George Mason, the old print shop, which no longer exists. Now they have a, a beautiful new facility. But um, I had been, uh, uh, like Michael, I have a painting and drawing background. I've been painting and drawing for years and grew up around my dad and mom, our artists, and met at RISD and, um, back in the early 60s. And, I, and my dad went on to become, to get interested in printmaking. I, printmaking. I grew up around plates. There were zinc plates all over the house when I was a kid. These things were on the kitchen table, they were on the dining room table, they were in the bookshelf. And, you know, a little like Susan, I thought, you know, when I was really young, I thought everybody had these strange metal plates on them. But no, I was, I really wasn't everybody having these. But, um, but I never was interested in printmaking when I was when I was a kid. I, I thought it was I thought it was too. And even when I got interested in drawing and painting, when I went to college and I majored in art, printmaking I thought was a little fussy and a little too slow, and um, slightly it's sort of slightly musty smelling to me. I thought this was something that just wasn't going to, um, you know, it seemed like. Um, uh, yeah, too, 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 too slow. There was something about the delay nature of the process that I just couldn't, I didn't like. So I, I avoided printmaking for a long time. And, um, and I, uh, I, but I continued to paint, continued to draw, and I got very interested in photography. And um, at a certain point, uh, about five or six years ago, I was working at the Phillips Collection in DC, and I really wanted and I thought, you know, it's time to go back to school and get my MFA because I want to teach. What do I do? Do I go back and get my MFA in painting or photography? And I wrestled with this forever because I was doing both and I, I love both. And then I decided, and then I finally made this decision. I thought that's it, you know, I, uh, photography is what I'm going to do. And I met with Peggy Fear, who was head of the photography program at, at George Mason. I enrolled, I was accepted. Um, and Peggy said, you have to take a, something, some other course outside of photography. What do you want to take? Do you want to take painting? Do you want to take sculpture, printmaking? I said, well, I'll try printmaking. And this is uh, really uh, where everything took a twist, an unexpected <laughs> twist. I, I went into Susan's class, and Susan, the first day of class, went through the syllabus for the semester. And um, it, it was heavy on screen printing. Um, in fact, I, don't, I think it was pretty much entirely screen printing. And I thought, and, I, and she said, this is what you need. You need tape, and you need screens, and you need all the, and, um, and the supplies, and this is what we're going to do. And, uh, and um, I kind of waited until after the class, and then I said, I, I approached her afterwards on my own, and I said, I'd like to try etching. And, you know, I, I teach now. I teach at Montgomery College, and I think you know about how inflexible I am, shockingly, with my students. And when they come up to me and they say, I'd like to try something completely different, you know, I say, well, that's fine, but we're not doing that. <laughs> that's, that's fine. And, you know, but Susan didn't say that to me. She listened to me and she said, okay, you want to try etching. That's fine. Here's what you need to get. You need to get plates. You need to get, she dispatched me to the chemistry department to get the acid. She said, this is what you need to get. Bing, 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 bing. And I did. And I fell in love with etching. I got completely engrossed in the process. I'm spending all my time in the print shop. I literally had to walk by the print shop to get to the dark room, and I would just turn into the print shop. I'd say, I'm just going to do one print. Eight hours later, I'm still in there. It became obvious to me that printmaking was what I really wanted to do. So uh, I switched. I got my degree in printmaking, and, um, and that was it. You know, that was it for me. Uh, one of those. Uh, who knows? I often wonder, you know, if you had said, maybe I just caught you on a good day. I don't know, you know, if you had said, no, no.
we're not going to do that. It, it, it may have been uh, it may have been a different story, but um, about the work, uh, Susan approached me some months ago. She said uh, she had the idea of a portfolio. I thought it was a wonderful idea. I've always wanted to do a, por a portfolio of prints. I've never had, uh, done one before. I like the idea of the intimacy. I like the idea of looking at prints in a sort of a book. I'm just going to open this up. Uh, there's five prints in the portfolio. They're all still lives. Um, I'm just going to, they're in here. I'll go from these. Um, the objects, what can I say about the objects? For me, the objects uh, are recurring themes. They're things that that I don't have any particular interest in other than they seem to present certain possibilities for, for drawing, for mark making. Um, uh, a lemon, a pine cone, a baseball, a stack of bricks, an oil can. Um, they just uh, seem to, as I say, present certain possibilities for, for drawing. I like work that hovers somewhere between observation and, uh, and a kind of invented abstract world. Um, I love this kind of mark making in Michael's work, which is loose and breathes and has a kind of freedom and fluidity to it. And I like to put that in the prints also, but I like to, it to spin into, at some point, um, uh, an, uh, an observable reality. Um, but if the work can slip in between those two worlds, if those two things can play with each other, I think it's successful. And that's kind of what I'm after in, 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 uh, in these prints. Um, uh, so as I say, the portfolio is around the corner, it's in the back room, but there are a few other prints as well. Uh, scattered around. I think I have 10 uh, all together. So that's it. Thanks for coming. It's good to see you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, say a few words about the, the portfolio is, is that it's um, custom designed and there's documentation. So it's actually like a suite. And this is a traditional way, um, a very Time, come over by the fireplace, you can see in the picture. A time, um, you know, like the Oriental in art, you know, they don't always hang things up on the wall, they unroll things and look at them. So it's a more intimate experience. They're beautifully framed in the back, and you can frame them, but there's five prints in here that are just quite beautiful. And printmakers are always like touching the paper and we're smelling the ink. And you know, like there is an ambiance to the art form that's very seductive um, and it's uh, much more intimate, something you can touch and hold. So this comes from a very precious, intimate place, which is, um, I had the pleasure of watching Jake work and all these artists work. And that's what I was going to say about the studio of Lily Press is that um, I was saying earlier the people that fill up my cup, like Mertiz has done that. Um, but working with these artists, you know, we you get an exchange of uh, an enriching experience. You're not, I mean, a lot of times artists work in isolation, they work alone, and the, the, the print studio is another experience for those of artists that have worked in print studios. Sometimes it's intimidating to come in and you're in a whole classroom or you're in a, a commercial studio where you're you kind of have to be on to perform. But the history, that's the last thing I want to say about uh, this relationship to the project and the artist here today, is that um, it's sort of a sacred space. That's why the name of the exhibition, we called it The Secret Garden and um, The Inner Sanctum, because it is sort of a protected place where people can come and make mistakes or, or go, oh my god, I didn't know I could do that. You know, So there's a lot of... Um, a lot of fun that goes on, but there's a lot of really intense uh, focus. So, congratulations. Well, thank you. You get the Academy Award. Yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs>